Hi guys and welcome to another video from Stupid is the Norm, the channel where we demonstrate how to become a millionaire in 10 years on minimum wage. Now in the last video I explained to you what a wealth accelerator was and in this video I'm going to explain to you how to mitigate the risks from risks from those said wealth accelerators. Now I'm going to be concentrating on the risks inherent in stocks and shares and property. Why? Because, well, of course, another wealth accelerator is business, but not everyone's an entrepreneur, whereas everybody and anybody can get involved in stocks and shares and in property. So the risks are inherent in everything we do, but there are ways and means of mitigating those risks. So let's start with shares. Well, buying individual shares in a company, be it Tesla or Amazon or whomever, is a bit like placing a bet. When you buy an individual share in a company, what you're saying is, I think these shares will go upwards and the person who sells them to you believes the shares will go down. Now, you can't both be right. One is right and one is wrong. It's called a zero-sum game. That is to say, when one person wins, another person loses. So if you're placing a bet on something, that means you're gambling, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And of course you are. So let me ask you a question. How do you feel about gambling your future wealth on the stock exchange? Not so good, I reckon. That would mitigate the risks if you were some sort of an expert trader, if you'd spent 15 years in the city. But you're probably not, so what you're really relying on is the toss of a coin. So how does that feel? Hardly mitigating any risk. An alternative to buying individual shares, and to increase the upside as well as decreasing the downside, is to buy an index. What's an index? Well, an index is just a group of shares, often formed in the form of a league table, with the most valuable at the top and the least valuable at the bottom. And one you're probably most familiar with is the FTSE 100. Now, the FTSE 100 lists in um, order of the highest one at the top and the lowest one at the bottom of all the publicly traded shares in the UK stock market. Another example you're probably familiar with is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the American equivalent, except it has the number 500 in which, as it suggests, lists the top 500 American publicly traded companies. Now, since its inception, the S&P 500 has turned in 9.8% growth per annum. Now, by buying an index and spreading your money across a huge basket of companies and sectors, you reduce the risk of losing any money. And that's because whilst one sector might lose money or one individual company might lose money, but if you buy every company in the top S&P 500, every company in the FTSE 100, then it's unlikely they're all going to lose money in all the sectors at once. Now, whilst it's true that all stock markets go up and down throughout the day, over the long term, they go up and down, but continuously go upwards. And that's because we keep consuming stuff. And when you're investing in stocks and shares, it's the long term that's important because that's how you smooth out the daily ups and downs and capture over the long term that growth. And you don't have to worry about how do I split all my shares, Perry, because the individual platforms will do this for you. I invest in something called Vanguard. Vanguard has a number of indexes. I choose the All World Index, which um, has the code of VWRL. If you go on the Vanguard website, you'll find it there. And over the, the term that I have had, which is over three and a half years, it's turned in 41.5% growth over that time. And that includes a period which covers COVID and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So really, really bad terms in, time, in terms of times in terms of stock market growth. But even with those two bad periods, it's still turned in over 40% growth on that time. But if you still fancy your chances and you think that you can outwit the marketplace, let me give you some more information that will hopefully change your mind. It's a matter of fact that 75% of professional traders, these are guys who work in the city, cannot beat the index. Cannot beat the index. So much so that Warren Buffett laid out a million pounds bet and challenged any hedge fund over a period of 10 years to beat the return of the S&P 500. Nobody took him up until about 11 years ago when a company called Protege Partners, who have a hedge fund, and they said, we'll take that on. We think we can outdo the S&P 500. So over the 10 years, they did that, made their bets, looked for returns better than the, the, the S&P 500. And after 10 years, they handed Warren Buffett a million pounds. They couldn't do it. So don't try to beat the market. If professionals can't do it, you have no chance of doing this yourself. Despite what all the adverts on Forex trading and, and, and daily trading will do, you can't do it. Get involved in the long term and buy an index. You can't beat the marketplace. Don't believe me? Believe the greatest individual stock investor in the world, Warren Buffett. Now, the second wealth accelerator available to you is investing in property. Now, I'm going to put my hands up here. I know very little about property. And you might say, well, whoa, isn't, that a bit, isn't that a bit risky, Perry, given that your strategy involves being all in on property? 
Well, no, it's not risky because I employ professionals to do all the due diligence on my behalf. It's a strategy I've tried and tested over three years and it's working beautifully for me now. I use a professional property sourcer who's been involved in the business for over 10 years to find my beautiful properties in nice areas for nice people to live in over the long term. I use solicitors who've been involved in the property market for years and years. I use a tax accountant who is a specialist property tax accountant and designed my limited company to suit my specific purposes. I'll do a video on my company and how it's designed in a few videos time. Yeah, but Perry, doesn't that rack up the fees? Well, you've got to pay these guys, the professionals. Let me ask you a question. Would you work for nothing if you were a professional? Of course you wouldn't. And if you want, yes, you have to pay fees, but balance it off by the alternative, which is you spend five or 10 grand on some rip-off property investment course where you learn nothing that you couldn't find on the, on the YouTube itself. And you balance that off with all the time and the effort it takes to invest in these properties, find the properties and structure the deals. And, oh, I just couldn't be true. I'd rather pay a professional to do that. As I've said before, I'm not a property developer. I'm not into property. I'm a property investor. I give the professionals my money and I expect a 25% return on it. I'm getting a 25% return. I'm happy. I pay them their fees. I have no stress. What I have learned over the 61 years of being alive, that the value of a no stress life is way, way more than the money you will make having a very, very stressful job. So now I work hard in a non-stressful job in Maccabi. I take my money, I give it to professionals to invest, and they give me it back 25% in terms of income, that's the return I get on my rent, and also five or 10% on the growth of the properties. It's worth doing, guys. Don't try and do this yourself, unless you're some sort of nutcase. There are risks inherent in everything we do. You can't eliminate risk. What you can do is reduce it to an acceptable level. So choose your wealth accelerator and get involved. Or not, it's, it's your life. As usual, all I'm doing this video is, is telling you how it is that I did it so you don't have to make the mistakes that I made. Don't be stupid and don't be normal, guys.